And we're going to bring in the presence of God, not that he hasn't been here, but we're going to open up our hearts and our minds to the worship of God as we go through this sermon series. So today we're kicking off another sermon series entitled Sync. Yeah, Sync. We're tuning in to the frequency of God as we turn the corner into an election season, as the country is up and down financially, we're not sure what's going on. We need to worship God and be in his presence so that he can lead us in this season at this time. Are y'all excited about this worship series? I think this worship sermon series is going to be really really cool if you don't know who i am my name is pastor mark if you're ready for the word in here say oh yeah yeah. let's go to luke chapter 10 luke 10 verse 38 um i'll start there luke 10 verse 38 it'll be on the screen luke 10 verse 38 God is faithful. He's good. The Bible says this. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. Let's stop right there. The subject for today's sermon is do not disturb. Do not disturb. Thank you, Father, for your presence. God, this moment is about you and you only. So, God, I pray that your presence would be palpable in this place right now. That, God, your glory would be revealed to us and our situation. Thank you, God, that you're lifted up right now in this place. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You may be seated all over the room today. Do not disturb. What I'm learning about life is that your difference, your uniqueness, actually paves the way to your greatness. How many football fans do I have in the room today? Football kicks off today. Somebody stood up already. I I see paraphernalia all over the place. I see people wearing Carolina Panthers. And uh, uh, I see somebody else in a Buffalo Bills t-shirt. And somebody else in a Raiders jersey. I I see it all over the building. Maybe you're online. Put it in the chat. Who's your favorite team? But I don't see any Cowboys fans today. I don't see any Cowboys fans. You're not wearing anything. Maybe because you're nervous. You're nervous. you're nervous about what's going to happen this season. I'm learning that it's your difference that makes you great. I'm still reeling and recovering from last year. I'm a 49ers fan, and we lost in the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes got us again. And I realized that Patrick Mahomes is that man. It's his difference that makes him great. What makes Michael Jordan an exceptional phenomenon is his difference. What makes LeBron James exceptional is his difference. What makes Jeff Bezos uh, an exceptional uh, philanthropist and CEO, built a great company in our world and our time, is his difference. And I'm wondering sometimes if we have become casual with God because we don't see him as different that that God in some ways in some respects in some areas of our lives God has become average he he has become 
ordinary. He, he has become the status quo. It's like we become so used to God that we don't really see his difference anymore. And in our text today, Luke is writing and Luke himself is different because Luke is the only Gentile writer in your Bible. That, that Luke is a Gentile and his thrust, his theme is to write to the outsider, is to write to those that aren't Jewish. Because he is an outsider writing about this Jewish Jesus, he wants to show a different perspective that he is not Jesus is not just the king of the Jews, but he is the king of the world. So if you read the gospel according to Luke, you will see that he does things a little bit differently. That Luke is the gospel writer that focuses on women or highlights women more than the other gospel writers. Why? Because women in that day and time were considered to be outsiders, that they did not have the same status as men. So if we look at our text today, we see that Luke is using two different women that have two different stories but yet there's one Jesus. In the text, you have two women with two stories and one Jesus. So Luke is using the differences of these women to somehow show us biblical truth. That these two women, although they are women, they're different. That Martha and Mary are different. They have different stories, different perspectives, different personalities. But yet in the middle of their differences, you have one Jesus. And, and, and this is not the first time that Luke does this. Because Luke, in chapter 1 of his gospel, you have an old and barren Elizabeth and a young and favored Mary, two different women with two different stories, but one Jesus. That he is contrasting and comparing an old and barren Elizabeth that is waiting for the promise of God and a young and favored Mary that has just received the promise of God. He is colliding their stories to show you that even in their differences, you have one Jesus. Because this one Jesus in the middle of two women with two stories, Jesus is not not just in the middle Jesus is a difference maker because Jesus brings an old and barren Elizabeth into an intersection with a young and favored Mary and when Elizabeth encounters Mary she just doesn't encounter Mary she encounters the difference maker Jesus that's on the inside of Mary and you have an explosion of difference I want to show you that Luke keeps going with this pattern in Luke Luke chapter 8, he uses the daughter of a man named Jairus. This daughter was 12 years old. She had fallen sick. And Jairus goes to Jesus and says, Jesus, I need you to heal. I need you to heal my daughter. But while Jesus is going to heal Jairus' daughter that is 12 years old, here comes a woman that has an issue of blood for 12 years. You you have two different women with two different stories, one Jesus in the middle. So Jesus is in the middle to make a difference because Jesus is here to show that not only can he heal a woman that is going and struggling with a disease for 12 years, but he can restore a girl that is 12 years old back to life. What I'm trying to tell you in the room today is that when you have the difference maker in your life it doesn't matter if you're old it doesn't matter if you're young it doesn't matter if you're sick it doesn't matter if the situation is dead Jesus shows up because Jesus is different Jesus makes the difference and what I'm concerned about is that your God is not 
average. Your God is exceptional. What I'm concerned about is that sometimes we can't worship God because we don't see him differently. We can't lift our hands because we see him as always being consistent. We can't elevate our praise to him because we don't see him as immaculate. We don't see him as wonderful. We don't see him as the counselor. We don't see him as the mighty God, the everlasting father and the prince of peace. Because if the president, it doesn't matter what your party is, but if the president rolled up in here today, you would pay him some kind of respect. But your king, the king, the king of glory, is in the room today and we struggle to give God the reverence that he deserves. I want to tell you that your God is different. Mm -hmm. He's different enough to be your friend and your father. He's different enough to be your counselor and your king because your God is just different. Do I have a worshiper in the room today? that will say, I worship my God because he's different. I worship my God because he's not like my boss. He doesn't use me for what I can do for him. Yes, I worship my God because he's not like my best friend. He's never stabbed me in the back. He's different. Can somebody shout in the room that he's different? Somebody shout, he's different. Somebody shout, he's different. Somebody shout, he's different. Mm -hmm. Now a praiser only praises God because it's convenient. But a worshiper says, I worship God in the middle of inconvenience because he's different. A praiser says, I can't worship God because my situation hasn't changed yet. But a worshiper says, I'll bless the Lord at all times. A worshiper says, I'm not praising him because of my situation changing. I'm praising him for who he is. Y'all not in the building today. Y'all not in the room today. But I just need a few worshipers. God help me in this room today. I've been with you all week. God help me in this room today i just need a few worshipers in the room that will say i'll lift my hands even though i'm tired i'll lift my hands even though i'm weary how can you sit and not give god glory the bible says that i will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and I'll enter into his courts with praise. Can somebody give God 10 seconds of worship right now? Yes. Come on, Link. Is that all you have in the room? He's king. He's not on your level. He's God all by himself. And beside him, there is no other. He is the way maker. He is the heart fixer. He is the mind regulator. He is eternal. The psalmist said, from everlasting to everlasting, he is God. God does not have an inception. He does not have a beginning. He is the beginning. I feel God in here today. I feel a worship rising in the room today. I feel a smoke rising in the room today. If you could get out of your circumstance, if you could get out of your head, if you could get out of your environment and say, God, I worship you right here because worship will move the mountain. Worship will calm the sea. Worship, worship. You're waiting for me to move. God is waiting for you to worship Hallelujah. lift your hands all over this room hallelujah 
I need you to see him that he's a difference maker. Lift your hands all over this room. I need you to get lost in his difference making ability. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, come on. Open your mouth all over this room right now. Come on. 15 more seconds. 15 more seconds. 15 more seconds. This is exactly what you need. Yeah. 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 Can you feel him moving now? Can you feel him switching it now? Can you feel him changing it now? Hallelujah. Can you feel him? Can you feel him? Hallelujah. 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 Slap your neighbor high five on the way down to your seat and say, you got to worship. 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 Mary and Martha are in this story. Let's look at Mary first, because in order for us to glean what maybe God wants to say to us, we have to dissect these two women. And we can't pull out everything from their story today. But Luke says a few th key things about each one of them. And he says that Mary was sitting or she sat at Jesus' feet. So he did not describe Mary by her height, her hair color, where she came from. He says that Martha had a sister whose name was Mary, and Mary sat at Jesus' feet. Notice the connotation of this phrase. He didn't say that Mary followed Jesus. He didn't say that Mary walked with Jesus. He said that Mary sat at Jesus' feet. That is most interesting and worth underscoring because Mary sat in a place where Jesus walked. If she sat at his feet, Mary was humble enough and content to sit where Jesus walked. That lets me know then, and we can conclude, that Mary is not with Jesus for his hands. Yeah, yeah. Mary is with Jesus for his feet. Mary is not in it for how Jesus can perform. Mary is in it because she needs to learn his ways. Mary is not walking with Jesus. Mary is sitting with Jesus. And, and the problem we're having, the dissonance we're having in our culture is that we're running out of time. We don't have enough time. And it seems like we have to grab the little nuggets of God, but we don't have enough time to really sit at his feet. But Mary was dedicated enough that she said, I've got to put in the time to dwell with Jesus. Mary said, when I, when I walk with God and I see Jesus walking through the region and I see Jesus healing people and I see Jesus opening blinded eyes, Mary is saying to herself that I've got to sit at his feet. I, I've got to dwell with Jesus. It's not good enough for me to stay behind him. I want to sit where he walks because I want to develop enough relationship with God that I have the correct connection to God. And I need you to hear this, that your connection to God isn't really determined by just being present. 
but your connection to God is determined by your posture. Your connection to God isn't determined by you being in the room only. Your connection to God is determined by your ability to have the right posture because worship has a posture and the posture of worship isn't if you lift your hands or you run it isn't if you kneel or you stand the posture of worship is sitting is dwelling is dwelling is dwelling is dwelling in his presence i have to dwell in his presence i have to remain in the presence of god long enough for me to have the situation i'm struggling with go a different way i have to dwell in the presence of God long enough for his glory to rub off on me and the thing about the old school church that I grew up in is that yeah on one side we complain because we were in church every night of the week Mm -hmm. but what it taught us is that you can't microwave a blessing from God you gotta put your worship in the slow cooker and you gotta say God I'm I'm going to wait right here and I'm going to dwell in your presence. I'm going to take time out of my schedule because God, in actuality, if I minimize your time and maximize my time, then end, in the end, I'll have no time. In the end, I'll lose my time. So I might as well give you more time so that you can elongate my time and then I'll have time. Is there anybody in the room today that wants to dwell in his presence? presence uh-huh david said surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever david also said one thing have i desired of the lord i'm not desiring a house mm -hmm. I'm not desiring a car right now. Nah, my life is too crazy. I'm not desiring a promotion right now. Nah, David says, one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after that I may dwell. Somebody shall dwell in the room. You've got to linger in his presence so long that your heart begins to soften. you got to linger in his presence so long that your mind begins to shift. Somebody shall dwell. Mm -hmm. And I know we live in such a quick and instant culture. We can't even watch a long video anymore. We can only watch a 15 second reel, a 15 second short. We want to get God instantaneously but sometimes you gotta sit at his feet and you have to dwell this is the same Mary that lived at the feet of Jesus so long that this same Mary when they were in Simon the leper's house Mary took her alabaster box of oil she broke it open she poured it on Jesus's feet because she was dwelling at his feet and other people said you can't use that expensive oil on his feet but Mary said you don't know how much his feet has blessed my life you don't know how much his feet has taught me how to get over anxiety you don't know how many hours I spent at his feet and his feet has given me the consciousness the awareness to keep on going you don't know how many times I lifted my hands and I lifted my hands so many times I will dare not hold my hands down today I'm gonna release my oil turn to your neighbor real quick and say neighbor you gotta release your oil 
if it's gonna flow you have to release your oil in fact slap a neighbor high five and say do you have any oil do you have any oil do you have any oil somebody open your mouth and release your oil right now open it open it does anybody have a box in the room and you want to lift it up to God and say God I give you this worship I give you this praise right now I give it to you God I release it in the room because I'm gonna dwell 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 I gotta move off of Mary because the problem in the story isn't Mary it's Martha Everybody say Martha. Martha. Martha is struggling in the story. In fact, if you keep on reading, when Jesus responds to her question, Jesus says to her that she's anxious and nervous. He can detect that anxiety has gripped her heart and her soul. There's a couple problems in the text that I want to lift up before you today because Martha is a most interesting character portrait in our scriptures because Martha is doing what's right, but yet Jesus calls it wrong. Martha is doing something right, but Jesus says you're wrong. Martha is not sinning, she's not fornicating, she's not breaking the law, Martha is still wrong. Luke says this about Martha. He says that Martha was distracted by much serving. Martha was a workaholic. Martha worked her way through life. Martha stayed in the house, took care of the bills. Martha cleaned the house. Martha prepared dinner. Martha washed dinner. Martha would sweep the floor. Martha found her purpose in her work. But something happened where Martha began to work so much that her work shifted how she should see Jesus. Mar Martha was so overwhelmed with work that she began to even despise her sister. She's working so hard and nobody's there to help her. Nobody's there to cut the chicken and nobody's there to wash the chicken and nobody's there to cut the greens and, and nobody's there to shave the potato and nobody's there to work on the potato salad. I'm getting hungry. Nobody, nobody's there. Nobody's there to even mix the punch. I'm getting thirsty. Nobody is there to prepare all of these things and she feels alone. Have you ever felt like you were left hanging by yourself. You had to run the whole meeting by yourself. You had to run the whole presentation by yourself. You have to run this aspect of your house by yourself. And you would wish that your spouse would help you out in that area. Or you're on your job and they keep talking about how they're going to hire somebody else to help you out. Y'all not in the building today. And you feel so overwhelmed and Martha she is overcome with working so much that she looks at her sister as the problem but Mary is not the problem she's looking at Mary and she's saying God how come Mary is the one Jesus how come she's the one that you're praising how come she's the one that you're saying is right how come Mary gets to do this full time 
How come Mary is in full-time ministry and I'm stuck at home working? How, how come Mary gets to walk with you and see your miracles and I got to sit home and pay the bills? How come, oh God, I don't have the freedom to do this full-time? I would love to sit in your presence 24-7 and worship you all day like Mary. Do you know some Marys in your life? They come on social media. And they show how they don't have to have a nine to five like you and how they get to do all these things for God. And you're sitting there looking at your computer like, what's wrong with me? I would love to go to coffee and talk about the Bible. I, I, I would love to sit in a small group on Monday morning. Nah, Monday morning I have to wake up because my alarm pushes me and I got to get to work. And you start hating Mary. Mm -hmm. As if Mary is the problem. But you have missed the way of the kingdom. Because the way of the world says, if you work harder, if you grind more, you'll get more. So you walk through life and every day you're hustling. 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 Hustlin'. Yeah, yeah. Every day you're hustling. You're on your grind. You're on your grind. And you're hustling. And you're upset because Mary is getting all of the credit. And you feel like you don't have time, but you forgot that the way of the kingdom is not the way of the world. In the way of the world, you have to work your way to promotion. In the way of the kingdom, you worship your way to promotion. The way of the culture says, work your way to the opportunity. The way of God's kingdom says, worship your way into my presence. Because if you worship your way into my presence, then I'll take care of the rest. And what Martha is suffering from is an imbalanced life. Her life is out of balance and the enemy has seen how he can get to Martha he can't get to Martha through sin he gets to Martha through stress yeah not sometimes the enemy is smarter than you think if he realizes that you won't sin against God he says okay I don't have to fake you out I'll just wear you out mm -hmm. I, I, I'll just wear you out with work I'll wear you out with the graveyard shift I, I'll wear you out with 60 70 hours a week and you say God I'm out here working hard how come Mary is getting the credit it's because the enemy has seen a chip in your armor he has seen a vulnerability within you that you are vulnerable to stress you are vulnerable to work that you want to work so hard and leave worship behind Martha is struggling so what Martha does is Martha puts her life on do not disturb. Yeah. How many do not disturb folk in the room? Yeah, 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 yeah. You are blessed by that feature on your electronics. You are, you are blessed by it. You said, thank you, Apple. Now, if you're an Android user in the room, I need you to raise your hand real quick so we know who to call to the altar and pray for you. Yeah. Before church is over. I don't know what they have on Android. But over here in Apple land, we have do not disturb. And, and I never... I, for years, I wasn't a do not disturb guy. Even after I started pastoring, I, PJ would do do not disturb. I'm like, I'm good. Because what people don't know about me, I don't need a do not disturb to say do not disturb. You text me if I don't feel like it, well, that's my do not disturb. 
Uh, that's what an introvert says. I don't need to respond. An extrovert says, I have to respond. And there's people in the room right now that I don't think they understood the purpose of do not disturb on their devices. Because when Apple released this technology, um, they weren't thinking that your do not disturb would be on in perpetuity. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they did not expect you to use your phone like that. That do not disturb would come on and never come off. That when we go to text you, it always says notifications are silent. 9 a.m. Notifications are silent. 5 p.m. Notifications are... When are you available? Uh, 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 when, 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 when are you available? Because you say, hey, I'm going to just let everybody know, don't text me. Don't call me. And the interesting thing about the feature of do not disturb is that do not disturb doesn't control them. It really controls you. So do not disturb doesn't prevent them from calling you. It's just that you're not notified. Uh, do not disturb doesn't prevent them from texting you. It's just that you don't get the notification. Because the problem in your life is not so much the people around you. It's the constant and consistent distractions of the notifications. That, that you need this crutch of a do not disturb to have your life organized so that you're not distracted by a notification. And, and what Martha is struggling with is that she has put her whole life on do not disturb. To the extent that she is working and she is so engrossed in working that she is distracted and she is consumed with what she's doing. But sometimes when you put the world on do not disturb, you also include God on your do not disturb. That, that you're so distracted and busy that even if God was trying to connect to you, his notifications are silenced too. That Jesus says in the text, your work is not the problem. It's not that I'm against work. It's just that your life is out of balance and you have no worship. Jesus is in the room. My God. Jesus is in the house. Martha sees Jesus, the king of glory, the one that turned water into wine. This same Jesus that is about to in a few, a few years or maybe a year later, he's about to heal her brother Lazarus and raise him from the dead. Martha sees this grand and spectacular Jesus that can walk on water, walk into her house and Martha is complaining about Mary instead of seeing the God of the ancient of days step into her presence and Martha is so distracted her life is on do not disturb she can't even see that Jesus is present and there's somebody in the room today you have lost your sensitivity to the notifications of heaven that's why it's most difficult for you to worship. That's why it takes 45 minutes for you to lift your hands. Because you have to detox from all of the distractions that you came in here with. You don't have a mechanism in your brain that says now that I'm in the presence, the manifest presence of God. I got to turn my do not disturb off and I've got to open it up to heaven because perhaps God
God wants to say something to me today. And Jesus was in Martha's house and Martha never fell at his feet. Mm -hmm. Jesus was in Martha's house and all she could do was complain because she saw Jesus but she didn't really see Jesus. She saw Jesus but she didn't really see Jesus. She heard Jesus but she didn't really hear Jesus and I want to open up your sensitivity to the notification of glory that maybe God is saying sometimes you've got to tune them out and tune me in and allow my notifications to come through the greatest feature about do not disturb on my phone is that Apple when they release this feature they realize quickly that we don't want to put everybody on do not disturb there's a few people out there I want you to see do not disturb me but 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 sometimes even if I'm in the library I need my wife to be able to reach me mm -hmm. I need my parents to come through I may need a leader at the church to come through through. I don't want the world through. I only want specific people through. So one of the greatest features of do not disturb is your ability to select who gets access to your heart and who you must discard because if you close everything out you may be dismissing the fact that Jesus is in the room and I came to tell somebody in this room today Jesus is in your house give your neighbor a high five by faith and say he's in your house yeah in fact stand on your feet go across the aisles give your neighbor across the aisle the one that you like a high five and say he's in your house and what would you do if you know and if you saw that Jesus was in your house how would you worship if the king stepped in your room how would you worship if the king stepped in the situation how would you worship if the king says I'm here stop worrying about Mary let me into your situation little pig little pig uh-huh let me in uh-huh some of y'all in here the Holy Spirit is knocking and saying little pig little pig let me in and because you don't have enough discernment you don't know the difference between a wolf and the word of God because the word of God will knock on your door and say I need to come in and I want you to worship somebody give God 10 seconds of worship right there come on come on come on somebody give God 10 seconds of worship disturb me God disturb my mind disturb my heart I need you to disturb my soul I need you to disturb this situation somebody shout disturb me disturb me God God I need you to disturb me with a blessing I need you to disturb me with favor I need you to disturb me with fresh oil thou anoints my head with oil my cup runs over I need you to disturb me until I lift my hands disturb me until I shout for joy disturb me until I'm aware of your presence for in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy does anybody feel the joy of God in here I tell you to worship right now because he's giving you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness somebody lift your hands open your mouth and give God praise in the room come on Link come on
worship all over this room right now. Open your mouth. No music. No music. Worship. Worship. You're excellent, God. Come on. Tell them. Tell them. Out of your belly. Tell them right now. Worship. You need to worship in this season. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let him break up your heart. Open your mouth. Close your eyes. Yes. Come on. Fill this atmosphere. Put some worship on this week. This week, I'll worship you, God. Yes. Come on, Link. Hey, 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 hey. If you worship me, if you just worship me, come on, come on. If you just worship me, if you, if you just worship me, come on, come on. Somebody needs to kneel in the back. Somebody needs to walk in the back. If you just worship me, stop worrying. Stop worrying about it. If you just worship me, come on. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Let worship, let worship rise. Yes. 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 From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. Somebody's crying right now. Let the tears flow. Let the tears flow. That's the presence of God. Let it flow. Let it flow. We worship you, God. We worship you. We worship you in here. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shamakana siete. Rapandorian Samakasa. Teperanoya Shanaya. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Don't be stubborn. Don't be stubborn with the presence of God. Don't be stubborn with it. Don't resist his move. Don't resist his impression. Don't resist his touch. Yes, yes, don't resist it. Let him break your stubborn will. Hallelujah. Let him break your anxiety and your worry. Worship will do it. Worship. Worship will do it. Give it to him. Say, God, I need you to take this. I worship you because it's in your hands. It's not in my hands. God, I give it to you. I give it to you. I give it to you, oh God. I give it to you. I give it to you. I give it to you. Hallelujah. 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 God is shifting our church. There's a harvest coming in our church. We're about to go to another service. But God just wants to know, will you worship me? Will you worship me? Forget about what's not perfect. Forget about you don't have enough hands. Forget about waking up early to do it. Will you just worship me? Will you just worship me? I'll take care of where you stop, I'll start. I'll, I'll do it if you just worship. I know it'll be a sacrifice. I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But just worship me through it. I'll take care of your worry. The bills, the bills, the bills. The bills, the debt is mounting. Just give it to him in worship. Worship will give you an idea. Worship will bring clarity. Worship will give you a plan and a process. Worship the King of glory. Who shall ascend into the holy hill of the Lord? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. He has not lifted his soul up to vanity nor sworn deceitfully who is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle lift up your head oh ye gates lift up your head lift up your head and worship me lift up your head and worship me hallelujah 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. every head bowed every eye closed all over this room Wow, that was an amazing work today. My name is Chandra, and before we go, I wanna invite you to give. Here at Link, we're a generous church, so you can partner with us by following the instructions on the screen below. Well, that's all we have for today. We pray that you live life connected and have an amazing week.